a Dutch publishing house has apologized over a book claiming a fellow Jew denounced Anne Frank to the Nazis in 1944. Ambo Anthos said further prints of the betrayal of Anne Frank would be suspended until more research was carried out. The book suggested Arnold van den Berg, a Jewish notary, was behind the deportation of the diarist and seven other Jews. The publisher said the investigation into who gave away the Frank family's hiding place in Amsterdam had initially seemed valuable. But in a statement addressed to anyone who feels offended by the book, Ambo Anthos said that they had been swept up with the momentum of international publication and admitted that they should have taken a more critical attitude. It comes after the notary's family protested that there were inconsistencies in the evidence that he betrayed the 15-year-old Frank and others by handing over addresses of Jewish safe houses to the Gestapo. Peter Van Twisk, a member of the investigation team, told Dutch public broadcaster knows he was perplexed by the publisher's apology, and insisted that the claims made had been appropriately caveated in the book. Published on January 18, Rosemary Sullivan's book on the betrayal of Anne Frank is based on six years of research by a team led by Vince Pankok, a retired FBI detective. The book was written by Sullivan after a crack team of cold case researchers declared they had solved the 77-year mystery, named Mr. Van Denberg as the man who tipped off the Nazis about the Frank family's secret hiding place in Amsterdam during World War II. The research further implied that the Jewish notary, who died of throat cancer in 1950, had used the addresses of Jewish hiding places as a form of insurance for the lives of his family, as Van den Berg and his daughter were never sent to the concentration camps. Frank meanwhile died at the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp in Germany in February 1945 aged only 15. But historians and researchers, including the Anne Frank Fund, said the Van den Berg theory was based on assumptions and did not provide clear evidence that the notary was responsible. Mr. Van den Berg came under under suspicion from the investigation's outset because he was named as the person who betrayed Dan Frank's family in an anonymous letter sent to her father Otto soon after the end of the war. Researchers concluded that Otto chose not to make the letter public at the time because he feared potentially encouraging anti-Semitism by naming a Jewish man as being responsible for the death of his iconic daughter. Mr. Van den Berg was also a member of Amsterdam's Jewish Council which had access to extensive lists of local Jews. The council was widely accused after the war of collaborating with their Nazi overlords. But retired electrical engineer and friend of the family Mr. Talon said, only a very few people on the Jewish council survived the war and it is quite possible that someone held a grudge against him because of the position he held and wrote the letter to Otto Frank. It could also have been a rival. How could he have gone to Amsterdam to inform the German authorities about the Franks when he was in hiding in Laren? He would have been captured himself.
Also, at the time when the Franks were arrested, it was a couple months after D-Day and it was clear to everyone that the Germans were losing the war. Why would he have chosen to betray other Jewish people when he knew the war would end soon? He would have been planning to go back into business and resume his life, and would not have wanted anything like this hanging over him, Talon continued. When I talked to his granddaughter on the phone, she wanted to counter what was being said about him. It is a difficult thing to do because the book and the film are out there, and it is a story which is all around the world. That means it is impossible to remove all the information. Mail Online can also reveal that Mr. Van Den Berg lost a number of relatives in the Holocaust, potentially demolishing the theory that his family were given preferential treatment over other Jews as the war progressed. They included his sister's attic who died aged 61 at Auschwitz in July 1944 and a niece Millie who died aged 23 in June 1943 at an extermination camp in Sobibor, Poland. Anne Frank famously went into hiding with her Jewish family in 1942 in the Grand Annex of her father's spice warehouse at Prinzengrate 263 where they were kept alive by employees bringing them food after German troops occupied the Netherlands. She and her sister Margot died in the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp in 1945 shortly before it was liberated by Allied forces while their mother Edith starved to death in Auschwitz. Four members of the Van Pels family and Jewish dentist Fritz Pfeffer who had been sharing the family's hideout also died in concentration camps. The only person from the annex to survive was Anne's father Otto who was liberated from Auschwitz. Anne-Marie was held by the Nazis for nine days on suspicion of being a Jew after being seized at a railway station in Rotterdam on her way into hiding at the home of Mr. Thielen's grandfather Leo Bastia Ensign, who was a head teacher, and his family in Sprindel near the Dutch city of Breda. Mr. Van Den Berg, a prominent Jewish notary, insisted in an interview with Dutch officials after the war that Anne-Marie had been freed, simply because she did not have the letter J on her papers.